G.I. Joburg is the codename for South Africa's daring, highly trained review force. Their purpose? To offer reviews and information on the finest G.I. Joe toys from the past and present. Today we take a look at the vamp. G.I. Joe has a lot of Jeeps. The first vehicle produced for the vintage 12-inch line was a Jeep. In 1982, G.I. Joe was scaled down to 3 and 3 quarter inches of fighting man. And once again, a place of pride in that initial line was held by a Jeep. But not just any Jeep. Half concept car, half sophisticated next generation attack vehicle. The vamp was born. It enjoyed a long life with the Joes and numerous reiterations as a missile car and a Tiger Force vehicle. It enjoyed service with the European Action Force, various rescue and enforcement agencies in India, and was even adopted by the Cobra Organization. VAMP is an acronym for Vehicle Attack Multipurpose. It certainly got to live up to the name. As the initial backbone of the Joes' mechanized quick strike force, the Vamp enjoyed many appearances in a variety of roles. It made his first appearance in Marvel's G.I. Joe A Real American Hero, issue number one, where it was used to ferry a colonel and deterred cannon. An early personal favorite would be issue number seven, entitled Walls of Death, famous for being the first G.I. Joe October Guard team up. It also showcases Clutch and his Vamp saving the day by using a concealed remote control to manipulate the VAMP's guns with devastating effect. It also depicts the VAMP being used to transport six Joes, something the toy can replicate... not so well. Naturally, when the 25th anniversary line began to include vehicles, the VAMP was an obvious choice. But this reissue set out to trump its predecessors. Now with a functional opening hood and engine beneath, it also possesses a removable bedroll and entrenching tool, and still has the fixed forward 7.62mm molded machine gun. How do I know it's a machine gun? That's how. The cannon was beefed up and now has hoses running from it. Presumably this is some kind of coolant feed or maybe the control cables run through here. For you red and blue laser lovers, who may insist that these are dual laser cannons and not machine guns, I suppose the power to the laser cannons would run through these hoses. If you ask me, I would have preferred sculpted bullet belts, because all they achieve on this toy is to limit the rotation of the guns. At least they're easily detached. The axles are now plastic and not metal, eliminating the squeaky wheel issue vintage vamps suffer from. The gas cans are removable like the vintage, and hollow like the vintage. These panels are removable too. We love removable panels. Perhaps it's some kind of fan cooling device for the guns. We also love clear panels added to simulate headlights and brake lights. Much better than a stripy sticker. And it can accommodate the majority of modern era G.I. Joes. Something to note, the underside has received some additional sculpt detail when compared to the original vamp molds. With its very subtle and tasteful new touches, this is the version of the vamp to own. And in 2010, the venerable vamp finally got the ultimate upgrade. Going from a two-seater to four, and featuring additional room for a gunner and plenty of gear, this new vamp does everything the old one did. And more. The new vamp looks like the old vamp mated with one of these. The result is impressive. Beefed up, heavy duty tires, working suspension and a ton of firepower. It holds all modern era figures comfortably and has a great deal of modular features. The standard size plug-in ports allow for immediate customizability and if you have any other G.I. Joe weapons and packs designed around this period, your custom options multiply. The weaponry is expanded upon. The primary armament is now a four-piece chain gun with a number of optional configurations and placements. The handles are gummy and therefore very rugged. Similarly, the included machine gun can be placed logically on the bonnet or elsewhere. There are smoke grenade launch tubes, nifty for masking a getaway, and there is a spring-fired missile launcher, perfect for throwing away. 
the tires are interchangeable with the spare, which is a seemingly obvious feature, but one that hasn't been attempted until now. They're also all-terrain and auto-inflatable. How do I know that? It's printed on the tire, of course. The suspension is functional, almost as impressive as the ore striker. Included tools snap into brackets, and the gas cans are removable. The critiques of this vehicle are similar to its predecessor. There are some unfortunate hollow portions. The back sides of the seats are shells. So is the ammo drum. And the wheels. It's more noticeable on the modern vamp thanks to the awesome size of those bad boy tires. The chain gun mount is not the freest moving swivel by a long shot, and the ammo feed can be dislodged during play. The functioning witch flat out rocks. Pull it out and use the thumb wheel to reel it in. The claw is oversized but ratchets nicely and by being so large, will be able to clamp down on any number of items, including nasty cobra soldiers. If you still have no love for the claw, any number of hooks such as those included with the vintage dragonfly or tomahawk can easily be substituted. Nice out of touch, there are slots for small arms situated between the seats. And a cup holder. This vamp can accommodate anything. No longer will Skidmark have to hold my beer while I tear through the jungle shooting everything with a pulse. <laughs> what is that? Yojo Cola not included. I had a girlfriend mess around with the vamps. She had never seen either of them before, but spent most of her time playing with the 2010 vamp. The level of interactivity is impressive, and the sheer size of the modern vamp might have had something to do with it. They call the driver Double Clutch, but we all know it's Clutch. In keeping with the original Grease Monkey Joe Wheelman, Clutch is a complete Franken-Joe. But where the original included only a helmet, this clutch possesses the 25th anniversary comic pack, beachhead vest, submachine gun and ammo bag, with the interchangeable mags. His removable helmet features a detachable chin strap. He even includes a backpack for personal supplies. He's fully kitted as much as you would expect from a single carded figure. The sidearm is fully removable, a meaty Colt 45 in what appears to be a holster clutch borrowed from a Cobra Trooper. Check the molded Cobra sigil. Nice one. And what can be said about Clutch as a character? Memorable for being a real ladies man, read Chauvinist, he enjoyed a lot of friction with Scarlet in the original 13 team era of G.I. Joe. Or rather, no friction at all. As his figure became more outmoded, he enjoyed fewer outings, but it was enough of a memorable character to endure even without an update. His Jewish heritage was even addressed in Marvel's Special Missions issue number 2, where the Joes were tasked with tracking a Nazi war criminal. Credit due to Harmer's excellent attention to character. I've never gotten the clutch that I really, really wanted because the figure incarnation always has a full beard. I've always pined for a clutch sporting three-day stubble, as he's depicted in the comics. To me, that's always been a version that speaks to his character better. A beard suggests that he's consciously groomed it that way, but stubble suggests neglect. In 82 I can appreciate the sculpting shortcomings, but in 2010 it's a deliberate choice to be faithful to the old school figure and not to be faithful to the spirit of the character. If eBay is anything to go by, it seems Mint in Sealed Box 25th Anniversary and the 2010 Vamps are comparably priced between $25 and $30. You can get a loose vintage one for around that price too. So which vamp does G.I. Joe Rick prefer? The answer is, we can't collectively decide. Paul likes the modern one, Steve prefers the vintage, and I like the Desert Fox. There's enough room in the G.I. Joe toy line for all these vamps to enjoy a place. They all bring their own unique flavor. I just hope one day a Joe vehicle will add the unique flavor of a windscreen. So far, all of G.I. Joe's generic competitors have had the edge for some time now. But G.I. Joe will always be the gold standard, and I'm not advocating we compare it to imitators, ever. Seems to me the fairest way to settle this is a downhill race. Three, two, one, go!
This has been G.I. Joburg's review of the vintage and modern vamps. Hope you like our work. Now shut down and get your vamp out!